Hi guys, it's Hatch One. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. This is my first ever review from Istuwada Parfum. I have smelled a few of them. I actually have owned a sample set from them for a while. Uh, but I wanted to start with this one because being a Tube Bros lover, why not, eh? So, they have a Tube... A, it's a real tongue twister. A Tube Bros trilogy. That's what they have. They have one called Tube Bros Capricious, which is number one. Then they have... Uh, Tuberose Virginal, which is number two, and then they have this one, Tuberose number three, Animal. I've started th with this one because this one's the one that stuck out to me, it's the most aggressive, it's the most fun, and they came out in 2010, so they've been out a while, but I really like this brand, I love the look of them, I have discovered quite a few, and a few of them feel super French, boudoir -y, vintage kind of feeling, and I love stuff like that, but this one is aggressive. So, yay, we like the aggressive stuff. So let me tell you the notes. The top notes are, and let me tell you, they have tube rows on every level in this. So that's kind of sometimes what a solid floor is, when you have the same floral on top, base, and heart. So it's not a solid floor by any means, but it's, I guess, a touch. Yeah. So the top notes are tube rows, neroli, and kumquat. That's well, one of my favorite words, kumquat. I don't know why, it just makes me laugh. The heart notes are tuberose, again, obviously, aromatics, so something herbaceous and plum. And then the base notes are tuberose, again, blonde tobacco and immortel. So let me tell you how this one smells. You really don't need a lot of this. I also need to say a massive thank you to uh, Tammy, who's one of my subscribers. I actually had a sample of this and then she sent me another one, so now I have two. So now I can have time to kind of really smell them and wear them and stuff without fear of running out. So, when you smell this for the first time, uh, this is, like I said, it's aggressive. It's almost like Tube Rose is a little bit ticked off. Someone's annoyed her and she's gotten her back up and she's kind of angry at the world right now. This isn't one of those Tube Roses that is, that have been coming out a lot recently. Amouage, I'm looking at you. A sweet, creamy, fluffy one. This showcases the darker side of tuberose to me, so it's the more aggressive side, it's the touching on medicinal side. Think of Fracas by uh, Robert Piguet, I'm not saying they smell the same, but it's that throwback, dark, heavy tuberose that is more scratchy and more angry, and I love it. So this one's got a lot going on. Um, what I will say is plum, plum is a, a strange one for me. Think of the way that plum gave Poison by Dior some depth and, and some so solidarity. No, that's not the right word. Think of how Plum gave Poison by Dior some body and some depth and some darkness. It's happening in this one as well, but this one has Immortel in it, and Immortel is usually the note of death for me. I'm not even going to lie. I cannot stand it. It is done so well in this, and I've got, I've got it dry here, sorry, so I'm smelling both. Everything in here is so masterfully blended that it creates a leathery feeling. So you have tobacco, you have uh, obviously tuberos, you have plum immortel, and you have aromatics, and all of this creates a feeling of leather. A scratchy, dark, smoky, and almost like a dark, woody, leathery nuance with an added dark nuance of tuberose so although it's called animal it isn't an animalic fragrance there isn't any note in here that's animalic as such however there is a leatheriness which i guess you can tie together with being animalic in some kind of form somewhere along the line so yeah this is a heavy hitter heavy hitter strong projection spicy scratchy leather heavy tuberose little bit medicinal, little bit green, and then you have depth from plum, you have a body, and I'm here for it. I can feel more of the aromaticness of it in the opening, and when it settles, it kind of, even though it's quite seamlessly blended anyway, it feels like it does calm ever so slightly. It's, it does still stay on that leathery, dark, smoky tuberose, but it's a lot more aggressive here and I can feel Immortel a little bit more here but it's yeah it's definitely got a touch of more of a greener or herbal nuance in the opening the dry down is somewhat sweeter although it's never really a sweet fragrance but this doesn't you know showcase the banana side of tubros the bubblegum side the friendly side but something a tiny bit sweeter does come out when it's dry here 
and it's less scratchy. It's more going towards like suede leather, still with smoke though, and darkness and tuberose when it dries. This one just feels awesomely vintage and bold to me. It makes me think of ladies with long cigarette holders and hairs done up with jewels in. Kind of just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a good imagery. It's so super French, I love it. And I'm glad I have tried it and worn it a few times. It's summer or spring now. It's not really the time I think to wear this, but I don't care, I don't follow rules ever. I get a medium to long length longevity out of this. I get at least eight hours, sometimes longer, depending on how much I spray um, and where I spray it, but that's the case with most fragrances and what it's like outside. But yeah, six to eight hours, I would say, and I'm gonna leave it there. If you like your tube roses dark, heavy, and a little bit crazy and not friendly, I would definitely try out Tuberose 3 Animal by Histoire de Parfum. And that's it. If you guys want to get this fragrance, head on over to natino.co.uk. I will post a direct link in the description box below. I hope you liked this review. I'm out to Romano, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. But today I smell like some crazy biker that smoked a cigarette wearing tuberose in his hair, or lapel, one of those things. Anyway, bye guys. <laughs>